click on the bell icon to never miss learning from Vedanti. Hello everybody, hope you can see me clearly. Uh, I will adjust the lighting uh, later on. Uh, very nice quote from a very uh, beautiful and intelligent person there. Nothing in all the world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscious stupidity, right? That makes sense, obviously. What what are we trying to study today? Let's try, try to just re, uh, summarize what we're going to study. So number one thing we're going to study, what uh, we, are, we are actually starting magnetism and matter. Okay, so at, as part of that, we are going to study what is a magnetic dipole. Then we will study the dipole strength, and then we'll keep the dipole in a magnetic field, like like we put the the electric dipole in elec uh, in in a mag electric field. We put a magnetic dipole in a magnetic field and see what exp force it experiences, or maybe not force and torque in here, right? So we will try to study that. Then we will also study different uh, parameters that we study, like um, what is permeability, what is susceptibility, and all that. And that that's the agenda for today. So, very first thing we do is a, a quick question here. Anything funny, anything out of the box, please come up. What's a balloon's least favorite type of music? Anybody? What is a balloon's least favorite type of music? Music. Trisha, yeah, that's what I was thinking. So, I'll speak your answer late. late. Uh, anything else? Like, there's no right answer, there's no wrong answer. Tanya is giving the right answer, uh, same answer, not right answer, same answer that I had. Yeah, maybe this is a popular. Yeah, Lakshmi says helium music. Yeah, that makes sense. Helium music. Aryan is also saying pop. Or Tanya, Trisha, everybody said pop. So pop music, right? They don't want to pop, right? So may not be maybe a poor joke or whatever, but that's how I start the class. So just just as a kind of like light, or maybe you might find it uh, annoying. I don't care. So magnetism. So first thing we study is magnetic dipole. Now, what is a dipole? If you remember in electricity, we said there is a positive charge and equal and opposite charge and separated by a distance of D, right? Or 2L, actually. That's what you said. And then we said that the electric dipole moment is going to be equal to the charge multiplied by the distance between that. We take the distance as 2L so that we can, when we divide it into half, we don't deal with fractions. Right? So this is the magnetic, oh, sorry, the electric dipole moment. Now we extend it further to a magnetic dipole. So magnetic dipole would be a north pole. Yeah. So now we studied Q and minus Q. So electric dipole moment was Q times of 2L, right? And then magnetic dipole is no different. There is a north pole and there is a south pole, right? So then north pole, let's call it as magnetic moment of M. And this is minus M. And that the length of the magnet is 2L. So the magnetic dipole moment of this dipole is m times of 2l anybody who did not understand this part anybody who is not clear yeah this is my library that that was being built and partly i have set it up somebody's asking so this partly is set a very tiny book bookshelf there but i have two big bookshelves here which will have uh, i don't know how many books so I actually have been collecting books for, for many, many years or decades. And I was thinking I will have one room where there will be books and music only. So big speakers and books, no third thing here. Okay. So one book shall be set up by the weekend. I'll set up every book here. I have to catalog them. Yeah. So this is the magnetic dipole moment. Two equal and opposite poles of magnet having pole strengths minus have separated by a fixed distance of 2L. Okay. So north pole is, is given... Ninard, welcome to the class. So North Pole is, is po considered as positive by convention. South Pole is con considered as negative by convention. Right? So dipole moment, if you remember, the direction of the dipole moment was from negative to positive. And same thing here from South Pole to North Pole. So this is South Pole and this is North Pole. Okay. So anybody who did not understand this, Tanya, Aryan, Ninard, um, Shreya, Hegde, anybody who did not understand Okay. Now the pole strength. Tanya seems to have understood others, I'm assuming. So concentration of strength of magnetism at the pole, right? Uh, 
Oh, okay. Ninard studied the same thing in college, coincidentally. Monisha also understood and Ninard coincidentally studied the same thing. So this is already I covered this North Pole is uh, positive, considered positive. South Pole is negative. It's all convention. Pole strength is a scalar quantity, like the charge is a scalar quantity, right? But the dipole moment as such is a vector quantity. So it runs from negative to positive in case of electric field and South Pole to North Pole in case of magnetic field. Ampere meter is the unit of that. Now, magnetic dipole moment, I have already covered all this in magnetic strength of M. So dipole moment is that that strength multiplied by the length of the magnet. Length of the magnet is 2L. It's not L. It's taken as 2L by convention. Now torque acting here. This is There is no force because think about this. There is a force of M times of B and there is an equal and opposite force of MB here. So the net force is equal to zero, right? Now, if this was the center of the magnet and this was theta, so the, the torque here is MB, uh, this is L, L sine theta, L sine theta, right? And then, times two because then this one also is having equal and opposite equal and same direction torque right so this becomes two ml can be taken as the the magnetic dipole moment so m b sine theta right what is m b m b is the amount of force experienced by a, a, a pole right so this is the pole with the pole strength of m and there is a magnetic field here B, so this will experience a force of MB. And this is very analogous to what you had. Let's say you had a charge Q and there was an electric field of E, so there was a force of QE. Do you remember that, right? So it's, it's just exactly the same thing. Yes, yes, Lakshmi, you're right. And yeah, Trisha has understood this, right? So torque is MB sine theta. So when they're aligned or 180 degrees, the torque is zero. But then if the 90 degrees angle sine 90 is maximum, so you'll have M times of V, right? So MB sine theta or in cross product way, MB, because you can give a sense of direction also to that, right? In a vector form, you would say torque is M cross B. Okay, so now I think we will summarize all this in, in one slide. That will be better. Okay, I'm, I'm going to create a new slide uh, so that we can we can actually work on this on one slide. So let's say there is a magnet here and there is, and I'll take exactly same as they are taking. So this is North Pole here, this is South Pole here. That means this is plus M, this is minus M. The length of this magnet is 2L, right? So the magnetic moment is M times 2L. Let's take this as the axis here now on the axis at a distance of x from the center so this distance is let's say x right i think they have taken x or they have taken r actually so i will actually do the same thing so that when you look at the slide you're not confused right they've taken this as r and this is l yeah so then then we are good we are good okay yeah so the, the yeah right okay yeah so the magnetic field here is going to be mu naught times 4 pi, right? 2m, right? That, that's right. 2m r divided by, uh, let's say, r square minus l square whole square. And this is the magnetic field at this point, at a distance of r from the center. Now we can take a special case here. We will say, okay, let's say the magnet is tiny compared to, so this is the magnet, tiny magnet, maybe small magnet, and the distance is further, further, right? So what we're taking is when R is greater, greater, greater than L, then L can be ignored. So this simplifies to mu naught by four pi, uh, 2M, and then one of the R crosses out R cubed. But this is when the point is far away from the magnet. Anybody who did not understand, please ask me now. 
Now we are taking the same thing here at a distance of R here. Magnetic field is mu naught by 4 pi. Okay. Now this time this is M divided by R square plus L square to the power 3 by 2. Ooh, I can't get you. What is what is the question, Tanya? R minus L whole square? No, no. When you do the derivation, you actually get L square minus R square minus L square whole square. Get it, Tanya? Okay. Yeah, you do the derivations yourself. We, see, we have to cover these many, many things here. Derivation part for these, I'm leaving up to you. Please. Okay. Now, again, the same special case where R is greater, greater compared to length. You can ignore this length L. You will get magnetic field at a distance of R is this much, 4 pi m divided by r cube right so two things that stand out here is this is double if you think about it abhiraj welcome to the class you're very late please see the recording of what you missed right so double here because look at this this is 2m and this is m everything else is same right? so at a point on the axis the magnetic uh, field is double than on the actual thing Okay. Another thing that stands out here is because this is a dipole, it varies as inverse of the cube of the the distance, right? Remember, Coulomb's law is more like it varies as it's an inverse square law, the Coulomb's law. This is inverse cube law. Same thing as in the case of electric dipole, it, it varies as inverse of the cube. If you double the distance, it becomes one eighth and so forth. Okay. Anybody who did not understand this, because we'll be doing questions based on this. If you have not understood this, then you will find difficulty in understanding the questions also. Anybody who did not understand. Good evening, Abhiraj. You missed part of the class. Please see the recording of that. Is that clear to everybody? Let me ask individually. Um, so many students, nobody replies. Okay, now people are saying Linus has understood, Tanya, Monisha, Ganit. Yeah, good. Aryan Malik says understood. Aryan did it in the, Ninard did it in the school. Okay, now Ninard understood. Uh, Man, Manjushri understood. Thank you everybody for replying. If you have not understood, you can tell me. I will explain this one more time. Okay. Um, let's move on to the slides here so that you can see the, the printed versions also. Right, so you're ignoring the length here when the distance is big. Okay, so Abhinaya, uh, which part? You want to revise the black part or the red part? Which part? <laughs> Which part is not clear? The black part, right? So the black part I'm saying, let's take a magnet with a length of 2L and the, the pole strengths are M each. Now I'm taking a point here. This point is at a distance of R from the center of the magnet, okay? So I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not deriving it. I'm just telling you that the magnetic field here is going to be this much, mu naught by four pi 2MR, where M, let, let's write that also. So M actually is, m times 2l the length of the magnet times the pole strength right so this is it when you say r is greater than l you can ignore this right so this will become r square and it will cross out with with one of the r's here to give you r cubed is it clear now similarly you can you can actually uh, do the other part also right you can oh where is it it's gone, right? So you can do the red part also similarly. You can say, um, um, I'm going to ignore L, and this is this is a, something is wrong here. Yeah, one second, guys, one second, one second. Something is going wrong here. Yeah, I don't know what happened earlier, but it was clicking random keys here. I don't know what happened. I think there was there's a wireless keyboard. Something fell on it. Yeah, so I just took care of it. So uh, magnetic induction at a point on the this thing is already covered here. This is covered here. 
uh analogy this is really interesting now this this is really interesting we are going to cover uh, similarities and differences between magnetic dipole and electric dipole and this will give you a better understanding right so electric dipole is two equal and opposite charges separated by a distance magnetic dipole is no different it is two equal and opposite poles separated by some distance and we usually take the distance as 2l here and 2l here because if we take l then we have to deal with the fractions there that's why we take it as l you can take it as l if you want right but that will be not as clean as this is uh anybody i'm giving you opportunity to ask me any question on this slide please i give you enough chance nobody asks now magnetic dipole is take one of the pole strengths here one of the pole strengths multiplied by the by the length of the magnet right same thing as charge multiplied by the distance between the two charges okay now both of these are vector quantities as i said magnetic dipole runs from south to north and this runs from q minus q to positive q one one of them is negative q the other one is positive q right so and all these are conventions you can break them but you should never break them it's going to confuse anybody reading your solution now if you look at the the on the axis we found this right we we found this when we say okay the magnet is a small far far away this is a thing now this is exactly the similar scenario here need not we we will cover that you are jumping ahead like 20 slides from now we will cover this you have written this two times we will cover this when we cover that loop thingy right but that is 20 slides later not now okay we will cover that now right so just 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 hold on hold on hold on okay yeah so look at this ninard a magnetic field here and electric field here right right so very very similar you have instead of mu not you have 1 by epsilon not here right so this thing is similar to this right so mu not is analogous i'm not saying they are equal they they may be similar very very similar to like each other you you are comparing this on the electric side you use 1 by mu epsilon not here you use mu not okay. now similarly the magnetic movement here is same as electric movement there distance is distance doesn't matter 4 pi after all is 4 pi nothing changes so i would really suggest that you take a, a note of this because then you will be actually comparing side by side there are more similarities coming up here look at this uh, electric field produced by yeah we already i already spoke about all this right so mu not is analogous to 1 by epsilon not m is analogous to p right and and so forth no electric dipole magnetic dipole very similar the torque experience is m cross b and this is p cross e exactly same right so this is the magnetic dipole moment this is electric dipole moment this is the magnetic field this strength this is electric field strength i would really advise you take these on one paper and try to to analyze this after the class try to understand this i mean just revise it not understand right so there is no net force if the electric field is constant there is no net force so net force is zero here net force is zero here right because equal and opposite forces are pulling center of mass will not move f equals ma it might move but with a constant velocity if it was moving no acceleration anybody has any doubts abhinaya shreya lakshmi ganit anybody rupa m ashik monisha manjushri rukaya you have not spoken a single word today uh, rukaya i take names of students who have not spoken if you don't like me doing that you can tell me always i'll keep a note on my laptop here and next time i will i will respect your privacy okay the reason is just to motivate you it's not like to to uh, show you down or something it's like i'm motivating you when i'm saying tanya you have not spoken anything in the class i'm motivating tanya i'm not saying like i'm not insulting tanya right you understand right everybody yeah okay now now this is where ninard was talking about it came much earlier than than i was expecting okay um 
Now, anybody, any doubt so far? Because now we are studying something different. Anything that is not clear in part one of today's class, we are jumping on to second part now. So, so far, let's see what we had. We had a magnet and we said there's a pole strength here, there's a pole strength here, and then pulling it here, pulling it here, there's dipole movement and all that. So that was a, a magnet here. But behind the scenes, what is magnetism? Magnetism is nothing but moving charges, right? So if this is a magnet, it's a magnet because all the moving charges are creating magnetic field in one direction. So to, to summarize what we will do in, in few in next class, actually, let's say there is a piece of plastic here. Some of you might have studied this. Some of you may not have. Right. So there is a plastic here. Any any material is made up of atoms. Atoms are made up of neutrons, protons, electrons. Electrons are moving. And then we said moving charges are a magnet. Right. Maybe there is a charge Q. It moves. It creates a magnetic field. But then if electron is moving. It is a magnet, a full magnet. Right? But the problem is one of the electrons that has a magnet has a magnetic moment in this direction. OK, OK. Yeah. So there is a magnetic moment because of one electron in this direction. So this was a south pole and this was the north pole. Now there is another electron that creates in this direction, another one that creates in this direction, another one that creates in this direction. So you can see they're all randomized here. So as such, plastic has zillions of magnet inside of it. They are canceling out each other. It's like saying, I have this pen. Uh, a million people are pulling it on all random directions. This pen will experience zero force, right? So if you have random, random forces here in all possible directions, overall there is zero force. And that is exactly what is happening. So there were in, infinite many magnets, here, but they are all canceling out each each other right let's take the case of iron so this is iron in the case of iron what happens is all the randomization exists but this is exactly what happens there are domains in here okay there are domains within the domain they are aligned in one direction and this is better than what you had earlier right they're they are still canceling out this is not a magnet this is still not a magnet, right? But then what you can do is you can artificially do this, or not artificially, but we can take some uh, steps in here and we'll see that in the next class, you can actually align it like this. So those domains were in all random directions. When you create a magnet, you're not creating magnet. It was already in there, but you're, you're aligning this. Anybody who did not understand this part? Anybody who did not understand? Okay, and that is why iron, cobalt, and nickel are magnetic materials. They are how aligned we'll cover that in next class. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. How do we do that? Right. So one of the methods would be you take a magnetic field here from some external source, and that magnetic field will align them. Or let's say this is a piece of iron. You take another magnet, start rubbing on it. They will align. So there are different methods, but but then let's say there is a method available to me. All I'm doing is aligning them. That's what I want to teach you. So magnets are in there inside plastic, rubber, wood, cloth. Any material has magnets inside of it, right? So this is what we are trying to study now. Now let's take a circular coil. So this is a coil, and let's say it has a current going through that. When it has a current going through that, isn't the charges moving inside of it? Right. So charge moving, that gives a clue, or oh, there has to be magnetic uh, field around it. It's the same thing like what we did so far. Now we are, what we are doing is we, we already covered this scenario in the previous classes. We said there is a, a loop and it, causes, it, it has a current in it, it becomes a magnet. Now we are comparing that magnetism to a, a magnet and trying to find the magnetic uh, dipole moment of that. Now because of a current carrying loop, this is the amount of, magnetic field that is generated. So what we are saying is this is a loop of radius A at a distance of X. How much is the magnetic field? The magnetic field is given as this. OK, now we are going to do some manipulations on this. And I how about I, I multiply and divide by pi. So let's let's write it with different colors here so that you know what I did just now. 
okay all i'm doing is i'm multiplying by pi and dividing by pi but when i multiply by pi this becomes the area remember r is not the radius i don't know why we have taken a as the radius in this case but that's fine so a is the radius pi a square is the area right so i can modify this and say okay this looks more like to me like by and then let's let's multiply by 2 also let's multiply by 2 times 2 times 2 so let's look what i get now mu naught by 4 pi right n is just the number of loops here so don't even worry i times the area 2 times the area divided by and then if x is small no sorry a is a small compared to x i can write this as x cube right so i don't know if you understood where i'm going here if you take a magnet on the magnet at a distance of x you had mu naught by 4 pi 2m by x cube now you compare this and this is what mu naught was actually saying i times a a looks like the magnetic dipole movement now okay so when you have a current in wire current times the area of that is the magnetic dipole movement equivalent of that any anything that is not clear here please tell me anybody and if there are so many students in here has everybody understood lakshmi says yes ashik m ashik says yes okay rukaya got it rukaya thanks for replying yeah okay rukaya have to participate in the class please leaners understood manju shri sai kumar yeah abhinaya did you understand so so let's let's move on and this is exactly what i was saying abhinaya understood okay same thing we covered in the previous slide now i would rather not show this because they are going to confuse you I, I have done it very briefly that was much easier now anybody who did not understand i can do it one more time if you need is that that all clear so when you have a wire a loop actually loop has the area a and the current i current times the area is the amount of magnetic dipole movement equivalent of that okay so so we will move on postulates now now we'll go to the electron level so far what we did is you have to really look at the big picture of what where we are going now so we started by by studying uh, there is a magnet here north pole and south pole um, so the magnetic field uh, magnetic pole strengths were m and minus m the length of the thing is 2l so we are saying magnetic dipole moment is m times the length of this right and then we actually found the magnetic field strength here was mu naught by 4 pi 2m divided by x cubed right and then we said okay, over here it is mu naught by 4 pi m divided by x cube where x is the distance of this point from the center of the magnet now next what we did is we took a, a loop here and said okay there's a current i going through that and the area of this is a if that's the case then the the magnetic uh, dipole moment equivalent of this is i times a right so basically for a magnet Let's write with blue colors here. The magnetic dipole moment here is m times 2l for a bar magnet. But for here, magnetic dipole moment is current times the area. They're, they're similar, analogous kind of thing. Anybody who did not understand now, still now I mean, you have to tell me, right? I cannot read your mind. Now, postulates of orbital magnetic moment of an electron. So we were talking of current as in current I. 5 amperes, 2 amperes, 1.39 amperes. Now we'll go to the minute level of an electron, how the electron behaves, right? So there is an orbit, and obviously for students who have done quantum uh, me uh, theory, uh, like have you studied quantum mechanics? I don't know how many of you are interested. I'm, I'm fascinated. I really like that, right? But then that's not something you study at the 11, 12 level. But if you study that, you know this is wrong. 
electrons don't go around in a fixed orbit right? that's impossible to even do that or find it right so there's a cloud probabilistic cloud electron lives here in in some probabilistic cloud but we are going by the simplified ma ma model here saying there's a, a nucleus here and electron goes around in a sh in an orbit which we are again simplify saying uh, it's a circular orbit let's say the speed is v okay so let's let's actually do it again the way we did earlier as in a plain slide here there is a nucleus here and then we are taking the simplified but wrong but very approximate version of electron motion here there is an electron here right it's it's moving with the velocity of v in radius r right so the the orbit radius is r velocity is v so now this looks like there is a charge that is moving in a loop when right. whether or not it's 5 amperes of current or just one tiny electron moving magnetism is magnetism it, it is going to create a magnetic dipole moment here right it's with everything like north pole south pole right how much so remember magnetic dipole moment is current multiplied by area right i'm doing very simplified version i'm i'm telling you nowhere you will find this simple current is what charge per unit time so when this electron goes through one full circle the charge e has been moved in how much of time right so let's actually do all the steps so that nobody has a confusion current is charge per time times of area right now charge is e in how much of time time is distance by by velocity so distance covered is 2 pi r divided by velocity multiplied by area area is pi r square so look how simple this is now the pi pi cancels r and r. i will not cross it out so that you if you take a screenshot you can see that so ev r by 2 so when an electron is going around in a circular path the magnetic dipole moment of this is ev r by 2 it's 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 same as ev like a, a regular magnet having a dipole moment <laughs> and this is exactly what i was drawing here when i was saying okay this is a piece of some material one magnetic dipole moment because of one electron another electron has in this direction remember this is a vector quantity evr by 2 right so then then third one has in this direction they all all cancel out each electron has its own magnetism created other electrons cancel it out so no it's not a magnet is is this clear or uh, i'm confusing you so i i'm going to post a poll here um yeah so i'm going to post a poll just say yes or no the uh, question is let let me write the question so the people don't answer wrongly are you understanding so are you understanding this seems like most of the students are understanding for students who are not understanding i'll try to be a little slow now but but you also have to watch the recording okay so this is what we have t is the time period to complete one revolution please note this formula down first of all for an electron going in a shell with radius r uh, velocity v it is evr by 2 where e is the charge of the electron okay moving on from here so so many slides actually they are speaking the same thing that i summarized there yeah everything we have covered in a little shorter right? we don't have to yeah finally we achieve evr by 2 that is the magnetic uh, dipole moment when an electron goes around in, in in an orbit so please remember that right angular momentum so are you clear with what is angular momentum say yes or no uh, do you know what is angular momentum do you remember angular momentum from your 11th grade So, what is angular momentum? Let's say this has a this is a body of mass m. Uh, somebody is saying there, yeah, yeah, Tanya, yeah, kind of, yeah. 
Yeah, Ninad, you're you're kind of yeah close. Yeah, yeah, both of you. Yeah. So let's let's cover more mathematically there. So this is a body moving with a velocity v, and it has a mass of m. So we associate a, a quantity here, which Tanya says is the amount of inertia, kind of amount of motion that it has. And more this quantity is, more difficult it is to stop, or right that that kind of notion. So how much of amount of motion it has? That's given by a quantity called momentum, and this is the linear momentum. Right, mv. Now, talking of angular momentum, let's say there is a point here, and angular de de momentum depends on about what point. Linear momentum is mv, doesn't matter. No, it's it's a fixed quantity. But I say, okay, how much is angular momentum? Your question is about which point? So about this red point. So amount of angular momentum is is this. So this is the direction of motion from here. You draw a ninety degrees line here. Okay, let's call this distance as R. So this is I'll write it specifically that this is 90 degrees, and let's say this is R. So angular momentum is denoted by letter L, that is um, P cross V, right? Or, or actually just writing not in the vector form P multiplied by V. Let's say, and that is oh P. I don't know what I was doing. R cross P, right? So that will give you mvr. That is the amount of angular momentum that the body has. Okay. Anybody who does not understand this, please tell me. If you don't want to go by vectors, just remember um, p is equal to mv. That is the linear momentum. Angular momentum is mv into r. Now, if you take another point here, maybe about this point. Okay, then that's not a big deal. You you keep extending this. This is the direction you drop a perpendicular here. So about this point, this distance is what you are going to use, right? That's the notion of angular momentum. So let's find the relation between orbital magnetic movement and the angular momentum. And there are like 10 slides here. I would rather do it in one slide here. That way you have a summary of everything. Okay. So same thing. I'm showing it like this, right? So that you can see what's going on here. So let's say the current is going or electron is going anti-clockwise. Electron is going anti-clockwise in this, right? So electron is, is basically, if you look here, it's going anti-clockwise. If it is going anti-clockwise, um, so there is a mass here. So how much is angular momentum? Angular momentum is mass of this electron times velocity times the radius, right? Radius was, was this radius, right? What is the direction? Direction is given by right hand screw rule so when you look at this you say okay it's going anti clockwise you rotate the bottle cap this way the bottle cap comes up so the angular momentum is in this direction it's going to be in the direction here so angular momentum is mvr right but now if this loop has like an anti clockwise electron going that same as saying the current is going clockwise if the current is going clockwise it is a it is a south pole because if you look at the right hand thumb rule the field lines go into that right uh, are you able to understand so far so there is there's angular momentum going up but then think about the magnetic moment magnetic moment is if the current is going clockwise so the current goes clockwise you use the right hand rule the field lines go into it because it becomes a south pole right so there is a magnetic dipole moment here which is evr by two right so they're they're kind of like anti-parallel to each other now anybody who did not understand or follow because of interruption here anything that was not clear Okay. Yeah. So, so that's exactly what is explained in the coming up slides here. So just go through this. If you're confused, let me know which part is confusing. I will explain that part. Okay, so I'm just showing these slides. If it's not clear, let me know. So 
whatever I covered, that's exactly what is happening here, step by step. But I've covered anyways. 